the Philippines has long been a lagging country when it comes to foreign direct investments. The archipelago nation has been known for its non-friendly policies, which have blocked foreign investors from ownership of many companies in many industries. Furthermore, being a domestically leaning nation was not the only issue the country faced. It had battled with many political instabilities, extraordinary costs due to business operations, and even natural disasters. Hence, if we add all the challenges stated and many more, there is really little interest, if ever, when it comes to foreign investments in the Philippines. This is also why the Philippines has been lagging behind its Southeast Asian neighbors. According to the official Southeast Asian Secretariat database, the foreign investment inflow made into the region had shown that from 2019 to 2020, the Philippines received only $15.2 billion, making it the fourth most attractive country to invest in, behind Vietnam, Indonesia, and Singapore. This weak foreign flow has caused many other industries to also experience slower growth, competition, GDP growth, and so on. However, a unique feat appeared out of nowhere recently when the new President Marcos introduced his new economic agenda. It caused many to once again believe that the Philippines may now have a chance to finally overtake its Southeast Asian neighbors when it comes to foreign investments. Part of the six-point economic agenda, as stated by the Board of Investments, was the Philippines by 2024. will take over Vietnam in foreign investments inflows and by 2026, overtake Indonesia. A bold economic agenda will potentially make the Philippines the second most attractive country in the entire region. Yet, that does not mean it is all impossible. Let's discuss two important aspects of this. What are the barriers, and why the government of the Philippines believes this will happen? First of all, the barriers of the Philippines as we noted earlier had always been about policies regarding foreign ownership. However, that reason alone is not the sole reason for the limited foreign interest. There are also many challenges out there. For instance, corruption is at play. Many cited foreign investments had failed due to corruption. One example was back in the Hanjin heavy industries days when they wanted to introduce a $2 billion shipyard in Minandano. Yet it did not happen because of widespread local corruption. Secondly, the Philippine also deals with expensive electricity and logistics. For foreign investors to want to invest in the Philippines, they of course want to spend less on operational costs. Electricity is expensive in the Philippines due to its reliance on non-renewable energies, much of which is imported overseas. Being imported means that when the price of coal, oil or natural gas goes up and down, so do the Philippine electricity prices. On the other hand, the price of logistics is also a huge bottleneck. Unlike Vietnam, the Philippines is an archipelago country. This means that if one wants to open up a factory around the Philippines, the procurement of many materials or whatever procurement is needed will take time. They will be needed to be sourced by the use of shipping or even through air travel. Now due to these problems, and of course a long list of others, many foreign investments are not appearing in the country. More or less, they only extend to the likes of the Philippine Economic Zones, which are primed locations made to address these challenges. However, they alone cannot also enable the Philippines to become a major player, one that can exceed Vietnam and even Indonesia, which are the two countries that are highly regarded in the entire foreign investment field. For a quick comparison, in 2021, the Philippines had recorded about $10.5 billion, whereas Vietnam had recorded about $19 billion and Indonesia at $20 billion. Not a far figure, but still nearly double that of the Philippines. But one must also take into account that the Philippines had an exceptional year in 2021, and if we compared the country from these two, it would show far more in preceding years. Knowing these, therefore, how are the Philippines and its president so confident that the country will, in just a few years, overtake these two nations? How can President Marcos be so bold in his statements and economic plans? Is there something that we are missing out on? Well, let us discuss first the solutions being sought after to the problems we raised earlier. First of all, the foreign ownership problem. The long-running big reason why the Philippines has not been recording good foreign investment flows is now long gone. The previous president, Rodrigo Duarte, had amended these foreign ownership laws and ever since then many foreign investments have either flowed in or are looking for opportunities around the Philippines. 
Secondly, the cost of both logistics and electricity are being tackled. The Department of Trade and Industries has reported that they are constantly looking for ways to reduce these big burdens. They are even looking for renewable energy sources, ones that can finally erase all the international energy reliance of the Philippines. Finally, it is also stated that the new CREATE law is going to incentivize new foreign investors, which can also help increase inflows. Now it is due to these stated factors, and of course others, that the government is continuously tackling and aiming to change the investment landscape of the Philippines. However, it is still a big and bold statement to suggest that the Philippines will overtake these two nations. But anyway, do you think the Philippines can overtake these two nations in the next two or four years? And what do you think the challenges are if not? And why do you think the Philippines can if yes? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.